Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at Dark Merfolk, a combo deck that can make infinite 1 1 hexproof Merfolk creature tokens thanks to the combo of Deep Root Pilgrimage alongside Agatha's Soul Cauldron and the recent Forensic Researcher. So how does this combo work? Well, Deep Root Pilgrimage says whenever one or more non-token Merfolk we control become tapped, we get to make a 1-1 Hexproof Merfolk token. All right, so next is we essentially need two copies of Forensic Researcher on the battlefield, so we don't necessarily need the Soul Cauldron as a combo piece, but it definitely makes things a lot easier. So with two copies of Researcher, we just use one ability to untap the Author Researcher, which in turn untaps the first Researcher, rinse and repeat, and for every iteration of the loop we get to make a 1-1 token. Now of course playing a 3 mana 1-3 in standard is pretty slow, it's likely to get removed, so instead what we can also do is use Agatha's Soul Cauldron to exile the researcher from the graveyard, and now any creature in play with a plus 1 counter will have that same ability to untap another target permanent, and then now if we have any random merfolk in play we can set up our combo, even if just one of them actually has the ability to make a hexproof merfolk token, if the other one happens to be a token from pilgrimage we can still combo it's just gonna take us twice as many clicks to make the same number of merfolk tokens in the first place so that's our combo and now the soul cauldron has a few other merfolk it can exile to grant their abilities to the rest of the team including the vodalian hex catcher which can sacrifice a merfolk to counter target non-creature spell unless its controller pays one mana which is very useful since if we do manage to successfully combo off and make all the one one tokens we want we don't want our opponent to untap and cast a board wipe well now with a hex catcher we can prevent that from happening as long as we have one in play or if we exiled it with the soul cauldron and then of course the hex catcher is also a lord giving our author merfolk plus one plus one and we can even play that instant speed to maybe set up an ambush and then a Vohar is another Merfolk with a very nice activated ability, letting us draw and then discard. And if we happen to discard an instant or sorcery, each opponent loses one and we gain one life. Don't have many instants and sorceries in this deck, but we're mainly just interested in a Merfolk that can help us draw and discard. So if we happen to draw the Researcher, but we don't have time to play it first, we can simply discard it with Vohar's ability and then exile it with a Soul Cauldron to try and set up the combo. And then rounding out the deck, we've got some more cheap Merfolk. Mistway Spy, a 1 1 flyer, is great at setting up our Deep Root Pilgrimage on the following turn, as we can often immediately attack and make a 1 1 token. And then the Scout is also great, helping us explore. Can also maybe set up our graveyard to uh, find our missing combo pieces, or just to fill the graveyard in case we need to collect evidence with the Researcher, because that's another ability we potentially have. We can collect evidence 3, meaning exile cards with total mana value 3 or greater from our graveyard, and now we get to tap target creature we don't control so we can potentially prevent the opponent from attacking us with a bunch of flyers which might get past our 1-1 tokens on the ground and then uh, we also have a few copies of the Jade Light Spelunker, which we can technically play for just one mana if we pay X equals zero, but later in the game it's also pretty nice at helping us explore X times as it enters, so it can dig pretty deep for those missing pieces while filling the graveyard. And then speaking of filling the graveyard, we've got a few non-Merfolk cards in the deck. Gaze can be cast for one mana to surveil three, can also be flashed back if we happen to mill it or cast it beforehand, and that can also be cast in our upkeep to maybe set up our future draw step for the turn and uh, try and set up the win on the following turn basically and then we've got the archaeologist an 03 that mills three cards and then we can find a non-creature non-land card from among those cards and put it in hand so it can find our key non-creature spells like the pilgrimage and the soul cauldron and then the mana base, we've got a relatively low land count, since most of our spells are pretty cheap, especially when Researcher is not getting cast for 3 mana very often. And then we've got some nice uh, lands here with the Courtyard and Cavern of Souls, naming Merfolk, so we can actually support all three colors on a relatively low land count. And then with Yavimaya Coast and Boseju, we've got a total of 13 green sources, and with Dark Slick Shores, we've got a total of 12 black sources just for Vohar. And then a few more islands to help cast otherworldly gaze, since we cannot cast it using cavern or courtyard. And then the channel lands, of course, offer a bit more interaction as well. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand, even though we can't play scout on one. We can play Vohar. And then we've got cauldron, so we're just missing a researcher in the graveyard and pilgrimage to start making 1-1 one -one tokens. All right, there's Researcher, so I think I still play Vohar, even though it might get removed instantly. We still have Cauldron to give that same ability to a different Merfolk. 
but it would be nice to untap with it and maybe put Researcher in the graveyard. All right, we get to untap, find green mana. So probably play Scouts, and then I could either flash in Hexcatcher or already play Cauldron. Start with a Scout and see what we find. Archaeologists, I'm happy to keep on top since it can find our Pilgrimage. And then, yeah, maybe flash in the Hexcatcher for now. Put an extra creature in play. Maybe counter some key non-creature spell. Could have also drawn into the Archaeologist and played it right away. Topiary Stomper's acceptable. So, that resolves. cavern. Alright, play archaeologist, see what we find. Gaze, I guess we'll put in hand. And then we can both cast and maybe flash back next turn. For now, play cauldron. And then I could exile the researcher now. Don't think we need to play around instant speed graveyard hate, but it's possible our opponent has an answer to Cauldron, so I may want to wait on exiling the uh, Researcher because of that. And then for now, Vohar could also draw and discard, maybe discard Gaze, so we can just flash it back in our next upkeep. So there's a few options here. I guess we can just use Cauldron, exile a random creature for now, although then we kind of get punished by graveyard hates like a trespasser. So let's keep it simple, attack for 4, and then just keep up all our abilities at instant speed. Cauldron to exile Researcher if needed, and Vohar maybe discarding otherworldly gaze. Alright, Bushwhack to fight. That's fine. Don't think we need to fight over it. Could now also give Hexcatcher's ability to a different merfolk if we need to counter some key non-creature spell. Glissa, okay. So, opponents mostly tapped out. I guess they could technically still have a Boseju for one green, thanks to the legend. But I'm not kind of expecting it here. Another archaeologist, so... Yeah, we'll discard Gaze. We can flash that back in our upkeep. And if Pilgrimage is at the top, we can combo next turn. And then, for now... I guess we'll exile the researcher. Flashback gaze. And don't see pilgrimage. Draw. Find a land. Okay, so now what's. We can give Vohar's ability to our creatures, so they can all draw and discard. And then we can still maybe play Pilgrimage and Combo. Alright, another Vohar. That can go. So now I think the plan is to collect evidence tapping down Glissa. Now we won't have the Hexcatcher's ability at the ready in case our opponent plays a Sweeper. So that could hurt. But uh, yeah, I think we play Archaeologist to keep digging towards Pilgrimage. Didn't find it. So we'll pass it back now. And then one needs to tap down Glissa, the other can maybe still loot. But now we are vulnerable to a sweeper, since we can't sack our merfolk to counter a non-creature spell. Shieldred's fine, so we'll draw a response. Okay, Spelunker can dig pretty deep to try and find our Pilgrimage. 
So we'll take our draw. So I think we place Spelunker X equals uh, 3 here, so we can maybe keep Pilgrimage on top and then still draw into it and make all the tokens we want. Although never mind, I guess we would also need to draw a land with a Spelunker for that to work, otherwise we don't have anything to discard, but I guess that's somewhat likely. Or we can just play it for the max amount, which is maybe still fine. Just play one X equals five. And that's good to mill. Make sure to put an upkeep stop. All right, there's a pilgrimage, so we'll keep that one on top. And then, yeah, we can just pass a turn here, basically. Now we have Cauldron available to maybe exile Hexcatcher to counter a sweeper. So we should have most angles covered. Can tap down Glissa once again. Invasion is fine, don't need to fight over it. And then with infinite 1-1 one, one Hexproof Merfolk, we can counter any non-creature spells the opponent might play. I guess I forgot to tap down Glissa here. That's okay. They can potentially remove some counters from my creatures, but Cauldron can just put them back. So, that all happens. I guess the extra draw could matter if they find Boseju. They're gonna try and remove Spelunker's counters. I'll uh, exile Hexcatcher here in response. Okay, and then no need to do anything else. I guess we could tap down their blockers here. Or technically we could tap down Skyclave before they go to the second main phase so they can't use it for mana. Scrap Gorger's fine. Okay. So draw Pilgrimage. Shield triggers. Play Pilgrimage. And then it's just a matter of untapping our uh, Merfolk over and over. If we go full control, we would have been able to respond to the untap with another untap. That's an interaction that can be relevant if you're kind of low on resources. But here it's not going to matter. Would basically leave me with an extra untapped merfolk to maybe collect evidence, tap something down. But yeah. This is the combo in action. Make infinite hexproof merfolk. And with the Hexcatcher's ability, we'll be able to counter any non-creature spells the opponent plays, which are the most likely way to beat us, other than maybe a flying creature. Although flying creatures we could also tap down by collecting evidence. So we'll just do this song and dance. So we have about 20 tokens. Can always keep comboing in the opponent's turn, I suppose. But ideally, we don't let them uh, interact here, should they have a Boseju. Although I guess we could always respond to a channel Boseju by making more tokens. Okay. That should be good enough here. Was a 19. Breach the multiverse is not going to happen. Opponent does have two mana creatures they can tap in response here. They can tap the Skyclave. Our opponent just lets it go. And 
then we'll tap down some of their attackers by collecting evidence. We'll make a couple more tokens since we had to sacrifice a few. And our opponent knows what's happening and concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand, missing Soul Cauldron, and then our researcher needs to end up in the graveyard, but we've got a lot of ways to fill the graveyard early on. So we'll start with Gaze. Facing Novice Inspector, so likely a red-white Convoke. Alright, there's Cauldron, Vohar. Good to put in the Graveyard, since we can use Cauldron to copy its ability. And then I don't think we need Odawara. And then turn 2. Archaeologist as a blocker. It's probably okay. Try to mill our Researcher. Right, another pilgrimage I could decline here just to get a plus one counter, which could matter with Soul Cauldron in the future. And I don't expect my other pilgrimage to get removed in any way. Okay, put on putting some cheap creatures on the battlefield. There's Researcher. So already we could play Soul Cauldron to essentially copy Vohar's ability. Then Archaeologist can draw and discard, and I could even play Spelunker for x equals zero and give that a plus one counter, and then next turn we can make Infinite Merfolk. Sounds good. So play Spelunker x equals zero. Play Cauldron. Start by exiling Vohar. And then Archaeologist can discard Researcher. Next turn we'll exile it. And then play Pilgrimage. And we're off to the races. On turn 4. Not too bad. We'll see what the Convoke deck can come up with. Warden. Could be a large flyer, although we can always tap it down by collecting evidence with the Researcher. Could see a Convoked Knight Errants, but uh, yeah, for opponents going wide, we can keep up. So it's only really something like a Sweeper that can stop us once we go off, or uh, some direct damage to close out the game. And yeah, with the Recruiter in hand next turn, our opponent's setting up to do a lot of damage. Just don't think it's going to matter. Alright, can't quite play double pilgrimage here since we don't have the blue mana for it. But that's alright. Okay, so we get to make one merfolk per iteration of the loop. Now, if we want to be extra safe and keep extra creatures on tap to collect evidence and tap down an attacker, we would have to go in full control here so we can respond to the ability by untapping. So we basically keep both creatures untapped at all times. It is a little bit more tedious than just going uh, without full control. But yeah, in this case, it's kind of necessary, I think. Oh, looks like I already messed up. Alright, well, don't need to go full control anymore then. Yeah, we'll still have one creature untapped left. To collect evidence, tap down Warden if needed. Otherwise, we have infinite merfolk on the battlefield, technically. Of course, there's still Arena's limitations. 
So that makes it a little harder to actually have infinite one ones. And then there's a token limit as well. So you can only have about 200 tokens before the game stops you. But yeah, this is a lot faster than having to be in full control. But yeah, as we mentioned, in full control we would end up with two untapped creatures. As opposed to just one. Okay. Oh, opponent's still hanging out here. We'll just have to pass it back and I guess we can keep comboing in their turn if needed. Voldaire and Epicure, that's fine. They're gonna try and grow the Warden, it seems. But again, can just tap it down since we have enough to collect evidence 3. And it's far from lethal anyways. Now we want to make sure we actually have 20 power to attack for lethal ourselves next turn. So we'll have to do this song and dance a few more times. Also the fact that we only had one merfolk as opposed to two makes this combo a lot slower. Otherwise we would get one hexproof token for each creature we tap as opposed to just one of two creatures. But yeah, opponent scoops it up. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And while we're missing basically all our combo pieces with two copies of Gaze and two copies of Vohar, we're gonna get to draw and discard and fill the graveyard pretty quickly. So maybe this is still worth a shot. Put in blue-black. We don't really mind facing a lot of spot removal. And yeah, there we go, researcher in the graveyard. Cauldron we can put in hand. Now there's potential graveyard hate our opponent could have to get rid of researcher before we get the cauldron going. So if we want to be extra safe, I guess I could exile the uh, researcher with cauldron, but then we also waste a plus one counter. So I think we just hope for no graveyard hate for a turn. And then for now play Vohar. Could also flash in Hexcatcher at instant speed while keeping up a flashback. But uh, need to get some creatures in play eventually to utilize Cauldron. But looks like they had a cut down end of turn. Alright, so that didn't work out according to plan. Back up Cauldron. So if one gets countered, it's still fine. And then we can play another copy of Gaze. Might be better than just running another creature into a removal spell. Yep, that baits out the spell pierce. Good to know about. And Heart Stabber, okay. Not a card you see in every deck. Maybe your opponent's got a small assassin sub theme, who knows. And then I would like to draw a land for turn. Do we want to draw another hex catcher? Not necessarily. If our opponent's got a make disappear, they could still counter cauldron even if we have two mana untapped. So maybe I just play a pair of creatures this turn, hope there's no discard. And then we can start with Vohar and then flash in the Hexcatcher. And there's a Tracta, so opponent does indeed have the Assassin sub-theme. Heartstabber gets to connect and make a cloaked creature. Okay, that works. I guess we could set up the cloaked card with Gaze if we really wanted to. I think I'm fine letting them hit us. Then we can play Hexcatcher, next turn Cauldron, and then we're just missing Pilgrimage to make all the 1-1s we want. Could also use Gaze to kind of set it up here. 
Although I need two Merfolk in play with counters each to really combo. So we'll let that go. So we won't know what this card is until they reveal it later. Alright, so next play Cauldron and can pay for Spell Pierce. And then Vohar is going to want to draw in this card. And Cauldron we can keep available to maybe exile another Vohar so Hexcatcher can also loot. And then eventually we'll want to exile the Researcher. So yeah, I guess um, we can pass for now and then plan to flashback Gaze. Keep land in hand to discard to Vohar. And hope they don't have any more relevant interaction. Both assassins attack. Could have tapped down Etrata by collecting evidence with the researcher's ability, but I don't think we really care. And then I'll wait until after they cloak to flash back a gaze. Could also put an upkeep stop so we can potentially gaze again in upkeep. So we'll uh, start there. And yeah, there's the pilgrimage. So that's the card we need. Researcher hits the graveyard. Can draw into it with Vohar. And Cauldron, Exile Researcher. Our opponent does have a response, Bitter Triumph. So now we're gonna need to find another Merfolk, basically. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I guess with Pilgrimage we can still combo if we have one non-token Merfolk. So that happens. Take our draw step. And Spelunker will do nicely too. Okay, so play Pilgrimage. Make sure that resolves first. It does, and then Spelunker with Cavern. Alright, and then we just need to survive for another turn here, basically. And uh, then next turn we should be able to go off. In the meantime, is there anything we want to do with Soul Cauldron? Already have Researcher exiled, but we don't have any plus one counters. Maybe Hexcatcher to counter non-creature spells. And then Vohar can basically make a token at instant speed by tapping. Mistway Spy turned face up, okay. So now they get to investigate a bunch. That's fine. Don't think I need to do anything in response here. Or a 10. And our opponent's got a lot of clue tokens. Alright, get to untap, take our draw step, find another researcher, can play it. And then if I want to play it as safe as possible, I guess we want to cauldron the hexproof token so they can't remove it in response. Of course they can still remove the spelunker, prevent me from making all the 1-1s. One uh, but we'll maybe wait for the opponent to tap out after they sack some clue tokens. And then once they're fully tapped out, we don't need to worry about removal and response. Alright, opponent's tapped out. So now it's going to be a little faster if I put the counter on Vohar.
And then I'm not going to go full control here. So this will be a little faster. Although technically going full control would allow both creatures to be untapped in the opponent's turn. So we can maybe collect evidence to tap a creature down. Regretting exiling Vohar now since we have more options when using our various abilities, but that's fine. Just look for the researcher's first ability. And we're on our way. Infinite 1-1 one, one Merfolk. We also have a Hex Catcher we can use to counter any non-creature spells. So as long as the timer cooperates, we should be able to win next turn. But yeah, interesting to see blue-black assassins in action. We featured a four-color version not too long ago. But the combo of Heartstabber and Atranta is a good one. How many Merfolk is enough? Well, we do need quite a few to beat all these face-down cards. So I'll go for as long as we're able to. And then we could potentially tap down the Heartstabber by collecting Evidence 3. So it can make another one. Yeah, because the Pilgrimage only triggers off non-token creatures or merfolk tapping, it's a lot easier when your two combo pieces actually are non-tokens. Otherwise we only would have had half as many merfolk tokens by now. Alright. We're about to time out here, but I think we have enough uh, tokens to go the distance next turn. And again, we're not afraid of a sweeper because of the Hexcatcher's ability to counter non-creature spells. Alright, we'll call it a day here. Opponent can finally draw their card. Untap. Vein Ripper. That could be a problem. When a creature dies, they get to drain us for two, so now we can't easily jump with our 1-1 tokens anymore. But we can tap down one of their creatures using Collect Evidence. Probably best to tap down a two-powered creature now, since we can pay the ward. And then our 1-3 can still successfully block a 2-2 without any creature dying, so we should be able to survive. The attack all out, we fall to three, I believe. So no one dies. All right, that was close. Vein Ripper almost steals it here. And then now we get to untap, and then all our tokens can attack. Even if they manage to take out some of our creatures, Vein Ripper only triggers after the opponent has been dealt lethal damage, so it's not going to matter. All right, sweet. Now we also get to take a look at all the cloaked cards if we really wanted to at the end of the game. Because if you were playing in paper, for instance, and the opponent disguises a creature, then uh, you of course get to double check at the end of the game that it was actually a creature with disguise. So I guess Cloak works in a similar way. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, we've got a keepable hand. Turn 1 Scout, turn 2, we've got options, and now Researcher we can maybe discard with Vohar. So we're just missing our Pilgrimage to maybe combo off. And there it is, Speak of the Devil. So we want to keep that on top. We might struggle to hit our land drops. Against Black-White, we also have to worry about Sweepers. And maybe even Enchantment Removal. So yeah, the chances of Pilgrimage resolving and us making a 1-1 token are pretty low when our opponent can remove Scout and Response. So... Let's start by attacking, see what happens. If they try and cut down the scout, we could play Hexcatcher in response to fizzle it. Virtue of Loyalty, I guess similar. If they block, we just grow our scouts. And now we've got a Hexcatcher in play to counter future non-creature spells, perhaps. Steel Seraph, okay. 
and our land is good. So I could just play the Researcher, which is also a way of ramping by untapping a land. And then next turn we could maybe play Cauldron and Pilgrimage and figure out a way to win. And if they kill it, then it's in the graveyard where it should be for Cauldron anyway. Scout can attack, doubt they're gonna trade for it. Resplendent Angel's fine, so put in more of a black-white life gain deck. So yeah, they're almost tapped out. And uh, let's see. So let's say I send Hackscatcher into the Resplendent Angel just to get it in the graveyard. Then we can play Soul Calder and Exile Hackscatcher. I guess the problem is we still need the actual Researcher in the graveyard since Scout won't have the untap ability. So, yeah, it's going to take us another turn to set up here, which is fine. We'll play Vohar, and uh, Pilgrimage looks good, so maybe start with Pilgrimage. Untap a land, play Vohar, make a token. And then next turn we can discard Researcher and play Soul Cauldron. We already have a creature with a plus one counter on it, so we should have all the pieces in place. Now, of course, we do need to watch out that we don't die to some flyers dealing the last points of damage once we make infinite one ones on the ground. So that's still potentially a concern, but looks like our opponent can only hit us for eight next turn. I guess with Resplendent, they can give plus two, plus two. But uh, we also drew Odawara, which could help. And uh, we can also collect evidence with a researcher, perhaps. Although that requires more stuff in the graveyard to tap down a creature. So yeah, what's the safest way forward? We only have one legendary. Yeah, I guess if Archaeologist mills enough mana values, then we're good to go. So let's try that. All right, we should be good now. Play Cauldron. Exile Researcher. Counter on, let's say, Hexcatcher. And these can now start untapping, making tokens. And then we'll still end up with a uh, Merfolk that can collect evidence to tap a flyer down so we don't take lethal. With Hackscatcher in play, we're safe against non creature spells like board wipes. And I guess we also have another researcher here that could collect evidence, but of course, we only have enough in the graveyard to tap down one opposing creature. So, yeah, for opponent was able to make an angel token that turn with Resplendent, we might have been in a bit more trouble. So lots of flying creatures can potentially outrace us. But now we should be good to go. Hexcatcher pumping the team also means we need fewer merfolk tokens in play. But uh may as well make a few spares in case we need to counter some non-creature spells. Okay, that's good enough. Pass it back. And then make sure to collect evidence here. Temporary lockdown. Yeah, that would have been pretty effective if it weren't for Hexcatcher. But uh, yeah, this combo deck seems to have almost all the angles covered. Once it actually goes off. So that's nice. And one more should do it. That's countered. Steel Seraph triggers. We'll tap down a creature in response and next turn attack for lethal. Awesome. Well, we get to see our combo Merfolk in action. 
And as I've got to say, I'm quite impressed by the deck's capability to set up the combo in the first place. And once we do, the deck's very resilient against most forms of interaction. So yeah, definitely give this one a try if you want to try a Soul Cauldron combo deck in standard, and especially if you're a fan of Merfolk. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.